Okay, now that you've covered navigation, let's do three different practices on conditionals. So, you might remember this from our flow charting lecture. What we have here is a donut storefront. A uh, customer comes in, requests a certain number of donuts. We then have to decide or examine or determine whether the donuts are, uh, excuse me, the size was 12 or more. We're going to charge 40 cents uh, per donut for those who order 12 or more and 60 cents for those who don't. Lastly, we're going to print out the number of donuts they originally ordered and the bill. Looks like in this case, uh, we're going to use message boxes for the whole thing. That's no problem. Alt F11, open up our VBA editor. Let's go past this example we just did for the previous problem. Start a new sub. Okay, let's call this sub donut shop or whatever you want, doesn't matter. Uh, based on the flowchart, we are going to need to collect only one thing, number of donuts, no problem. So let's dim NOD as an integer since we don't sell half donuts or partial donuts. Let's follow our input processing output model. Uh, for inputs, it says use a message box. So the way we're going to do that is much like we did in a previous chapter example, NOD equals, and we're going to use the input box function. Uh, this is a function built into the VBA library. We need to pass into this the question we want to ask the user. How many donuts do you want? Okay. When that input box pops up and they enter it and hit OK, it's going to store the value they entered in this variable called NOD. So let's try that out. F8, recognize our variable NOD. F8 again, now it's going to pop open the input box. There it is, how many donuts do you want? 10, okay. Now the value of 10 is stored here in the variable NOD. Okay, step one is done, step two. All right, if we're, if we're going to decide what their bill is, um, first we're going to need to create a variable for it. I'll put it right here. Bill, uh, since we can charge uh, change, it's, it's not in whole dollars. Uh, we're going to need decimals, so we'll use currency. Oops, excuse me. Bill as currency. Okay. Next, we're going to have to decide or or check if they ordered more or less than twelve, and our processing will be different based on the answer to that question. This is done much the same as it is here in the flowchart. We're going to ask a question that has to have a true/false answer to it. If true, we're going to ignore what happens in the false side and perform the true side, and vice versa. Then we're going to print the results. Now in this case, we're not actually going to print. Um, typically this means literally print something out, although it could be to a PDF. We're not going to worry about that. Instead of print, we're going to prompt. Prompt implies you pop something open in a message box. Anyway, back here, the way we create that decision that we have there in the flowchart is using an if-then statement. If excuse me, if, then there's going to be some condition in the middle that has a true-false value, then and I'm going to come down here and hit end if. Always put your end if before you do anything else, otherwise you might forget it and wonder why your program doesn't work. So, our condition here is something that needs to be evaluated with a true-false value. Our condition in particular is going to be if NOD is greater than or equal to 12. If it's greater than or equal to 12, then we want the bill to equal NOD times 0.4. All right, and let's output that result now. First, let's check it. F8 or Command Shift I on the Mac. Input box, how many donuts do you want? I want 10. 10 is not greater than or equal to 12, so it's going to skip it, and bill remains 0. See how it ignored that line? And I go to the end. This time we'll put in, uh, whoops, let me start that one over. Stop, F8. This time let's put in, uh, I don't know, 100. Okay, F8 again. This time, because 100 is greater than or equal to 12, it goes inside of this if block, and now bill will be processed. Bill is $40 at 40 cents each, and we go to the end. All right, so what we need then is to handle this condition where this if equals false. So you can have if statements that only evaluate or only handle a true condition. Otherwise, 
uh, they exit or they do nothing at all. To handle a false condition, we have to add an else. So it doesn't matter what else this is equal to, if it's not greater than or equal to 12, no matter what, we're going to calculate bill by saying it's equal to the number of donuts times 60 cents each. All right, let's go ahead and add our output now too. It wants to use message boxes, so let's use msgbox, and let's give them, uh, we could just put bill, um, but let's, let's be a bit more descriptive. As we learned on day one, we can use the ampersand to concatenate you, or maybe your total is, and bill is going to be cast into a string in this case, so we're going to have to go ahead and add a dollar sign right here. There we go. Your total is. Let's go ahead and move into this. How many donuts do you want? Ten. Your total is six. All right, let's do that step at a time. How many donuts do you want? Ten. F8 or Command Shift I to keep going through. It skips this first condition once again because it's not greater than or equal to 12. However, it goes into the else condition because it is was evaluated as false. Not so bad. So that's a that's a, a conditional, an if else. Let's make this a little bit harder. Let's say if they order more than uh, I don't know 50, then we'll actually give them another price break and charge them 38 cents each. There's actually a few ways we can do this. We can build or add an else if inside this if block, or we can add a nested if then or if else. Let's do um, let's add an else if first. So if it's greater than 12, go into here. I'm gonna have to adjust this a bit, and I'm actually gonna change this to if it's less than 12, let's put the 60 cent condition right here. If it's less than 12, charge them 60 cents. And then we're gonna use an else if. Now notice that there's no space in between the else and the if. So else if, and then there's another condition. In this case, we'll say if NOD, all right, if it's not, if it's not less than 12, that means it's 12 or more. Then we're gonna evaluate next if NOD is greater than or equal to 50, then the bill, whoops, something I forgot. Every time there's an if, there has to be a then. So I've got if, condition, then. If, condition, I have to add a then. Okay, else if it's greater than 50, it'll be 38 cents each. If it's not, if it's less than 12, or if it's, if it's not less than 12 and it's not greater than 50, then it must be somewhere between 12 and 49. And we know we wanna charge those people 40 cents each. So this last condition can be an else. So it doesn't matter what else it is, every other condition, the bill is gonna be equal to number of donuts times 0.4. So here's our if, else, if, else. Let's try this one. Um, I'm going to play or finish that, play again. How many donuts do we want? Let's start with 10. So this should give us $6 and it works. Let's try it again, F5, and let's put in 20. So 20 means we should be charged 40 cents each. Uh, so that means it should be $8. Okay. Lastly, let's try it again, F5 play. Uh, we want, um, let's do 100, which means it should be $38. There we go. All works. Let's do this a different way though. Last thing I want to do is instead of using an if else if, I want a nested if. So what I'm going to do, let's say, all right, if it's, let's see, I'm going to change this one now. If it is greater than or equal to 12, or if it's not greater than or equal to 12, that means I'm going to charge 60 cents each. Okay, I've handled the false condition. However, if it is greater than 12, I'm going to tab in and create an entirely new conditional. If NOD greater than 50, actually it's greater than or equal to 50, then bill equals NOD times 0.38. If it's if it's greater than 12, but not greater than 50, oops, sorry, then bill will equals NOD times 40. 
So we basically made another if block and nested the entire thing inside the true condition. What gets processed if this first condition right here is evaluated as true. We've nested this entirely inside this outer if block. And you can nest these things as many levels as you want deep. And in two more examples, you'll see, uh, you'll see us do just that. But that's it. Let's move on to the next example.